Uh, we've got some really exciting stuff to share, and let's get to it. I know we were talking just a couple of minutes before the show started, Mark, and uh, I didn't want to spill the beans earlier, but uh, you're kind of bullish here. I am. These charts were obviously done before the Powell speech and uh, reflect, uh, you know, some thinking that we've been communicating with our subscribers for the last month or so. And uh, we're going to walk uh, pretty extensively through uh, why we feel the way we do about the market and uh, definitely bullish here and, and happy to see that there's some breakout potential above 2700 developing in the S&P. Awesome. Take it away. Okay, so today's presentation is all about combining fundamentals with technicals to improve your trading and your investment performance. Obviously, uh, if you're using stockcharts.com, as I've been since Chip Anderson rolled out the platform uh, probably 20 years ago, you've got the best technical platform in the world, and they keep improving it. What we're going to talk about today is uh, how I have succeeded and survived 50 years on Wall Street by using technical analysis, but always in conjunction with fundamentals. I realized early on uh, that fundamentals drove the market, uh, but you needed technicals to survive bear markets. I've lived through 10 of them. I can tell you that this is not a bear market because so many people are bearish. From Jim Cramer, my good friend, to the analysts, and, um, Morgan Stanley, Merrill Lynch, and Goldman Sachs, I've never seen a bear market develop when everybody is calling for it on CNBC and it's a contrary way to look at things, but the crowd is always wrong even when the crowd are the experts. So what today's presentation is about is our way to look at the fundamentals because that's time consuming, requires some expertise, and you've got 5,000 stocks out there and some of the stocks that had earnings upgrades and downgrades today like Beacon are not that well known. So you need a way to objectively know what the fundamental potential for a stock is. And based on working with institutional investors for over 30 years, I created the Chaikin Power Gauge rating in 2010, and it's really the culmination of my life's work. I went way beyond technical analysis. I know many of you are familiar with Chaikin Money Flow. Um, uh, just yesterday, uh, Jeffrey Sout, who's the chief strategist at Raymond James, uh, was quoted as being extremely bullish on the market, and he said money flow is improving, and lo and behold, there was a stock charts chart with Chaikin Money Flow on it. So. Uh, I wanted to go way beyond that and build what was uh, reflective of what successful buy side portfolio managers with different styles and time horizons had been doing for over 30 years. And I work with them selling technical analysis tools, shaking money flow and relative strength. But I was able to draw upon everything I learned from them. They were mentors to me to create the shake and power gauge rating. But before we do that, as Tom said, I want to take a look at the market because uh, this has been a very difficult, challenging, and painful period for a lot of people. Uh, we went in early January from an uptrend on autopilot in 2017 to a roller coaster of a correction. And Tom, when we were talking earlier, you talked about the February uh, double bottom in 2018, February, March double bottom. I was actually on Market Watchers Live for the first time in late February when we were right up here at that uh, rally point, the 2800. And on that presentation, I talked about the need to come back down and test those lows. Intraday low was 2530 back then, uh, closing low was around 2580. Um, so we formed a W bottom. Now we're going to talk about when you see V-shaped bottoms and when you see W bottoms. But what happened after this W-shaped bottom is that you went back to an uptrend on autopilot. It was pretty much straight up from March through September. And then we had a big wave down. There's no other way to express it. We just, selling fed upon itself. Now, there's some interesting reasons why that may have happened. ETFs have become very prominent. Uh, you have the SPY, which we're going to look at in a minute. We're actually looking at it now, one-year chart of the SPY and Chaikin Analytics. And a lot of money is in this, $240 billion roughly, even after a big correction. And that money is in cap-weighted stocks, Apple, Facebook, Netflix, Google, 
uh, and the like because it's a cap weighted index. So uh, where are we now in the market? Well, we had this big wave down, panic selling down to 2,600 intraday. We didn't close below 2,650. Now, why is 2,650 important? Because that represented a 10% correction in the S&P 500. So we rallied up twice to 2,800. That's your expected resistance level. Actually closed above it, but we never tested that bottom. Now, just Friday a week ago, we came back down, closed under 2,650. So that means you're not in a pullback, you're in a correction. And I'm going to show you in a minute why that's important. And look at shaken money flow. Shaken money flow down here was actually positive when you came back down and got oversold. And that's the pattern we're going to look at very uh, intensively in this um, presentation because it's something you can do in stock charts. Uh, but we've been teaching this pattern for institutions uh, for over 30 years. Now, we now have a power gauge rating for ETFs that combines fundamentals with technicals. So the power gauge rating on the SPY is bullish. and It has been bullish except for this neutral period as we were uh, forming what I believe is a W pattern. And today's move up in the face of the Powell, Jerome Powell speech where everybody was nervous that he would talk about continuing the interest rate hike cycle, which is clearly weighing heavily on people. But as Tom said, uh, interest rates that go up because the economy is strong are actually bullish, not bearish. JP Morgan, Tom, did a study, published it about four months ago, that until the 10-year Treasury gets to 5%, uh, it doesn't really have an impact on the economy. And that's, uh, I think, where we are right now. So I believe that we're forming a W. If we break through 28.10 on a closing basis, guess what? Reverse head and shoulders, and that counts to 30.25, which has been our longstanding target for this bull market. So I think that's the potential. We need a catalyst to get there. And I think Jerome Powell, uh, the non-event speech today is one of the catalysts. Obviously, if we get some positive news on tariffs between uh, the G20 and the talks between China and uh, the U.S., that would be an even bigger catalyst. So let's put pullbacks into perspective. Since 1945, I'm going to update this on the fly. This chart's about nine months old. Been 77 declines of between 5 and 10%. We call them a, that a pullback. That's when you typically see V-shaped bottoms. Average decline of 6%. Take about a month to two months, and then you recover to new highs. Where we are now is a little bit odd. There have been 28 declines of between 10 and 20 percent. We call them corrections. They average about 13 percent. So 2,600 was about 12 percent down from the high of 2,940. They tend to last for four months and then within three months you recover to new highs. I believe we're in that cycle now even though it's the right side of the W where you got your 10 percent decline. So right side of the W, usually the left side gives you the 10 percent decline as it did in January. So I think that's where we are now. And just to show you that this is not unusual, here is a chart uh, from advisor perspectives that shows you the drawdowns from record closes in this bull market beginning in March of 09. And where the red circles are, these were W-shaped bottoms that happened because the S&P closed down more than 10% from its high. So we had them in 10, 11, we had uh, one in 15 in uh, August, September, and then again in 2016. What was the catalyst in 2016? The market looked like it was going to hell in a handbasket, as my old friend Stan Burge used to say. Well, the catalyst was Jamie Dimon, CEO of JP Morgan, saying, I'm buying $25 million worth of my own stock. Came out of the blue. It was enough to trigger a move to new highs. Any closing decline, even when it approaches 10% of less than 10%, typically results in a V-shaped bottom. So where are we now? This chart's uh, about a week and a half old. We actually got that 10% closing decline. I believe that given uh, the circumstances, the seasonality and so forth, that we have formed a W bottom. Could we go back down to 2,600? Of course, but I don't think that's going to happen. So uh, the point of this chart is there's nothing new going on. Corrections are painful when you're living through them, 
but they're opportunities. And we're going to look at how you take advantage of them. So here's something from stock charts that I look at um, every week. These are the number of stocks making new 52-week uh, lows in the S&P 500. And they typically spike at the first bottom. And that's what happened back in February of 16. And then again in uh, January of 18. And then you get a bullish divergence at the bottom. And that's what we've seen here because you can see that we form this W pattern. And look at this, the percentage of stocks making uh, new lows was almost non-existent. And so we've got a really bullish divergence forming. And another indicator that I look at is put call volumes. And here we have a chart that goes back to 2001, uh, courtesy of the Options Clearing Corporation, heavy put buyers by small traders in the last two weeks. Over the, this is an eight week sort of moving average. The same condition existed at the bottom in 2002 and 2008. Uh, you might say, well, those were bear markets. Well, if you believe the people on CNBC, we're in a bear market. So here's a very bullish contrary indicator. Small traders have been hedging a lot. And even back here in 15, 16, you can see the spike. So it's a contrary indicator and it encourages me to be bullish. We've been seeing this pattern now for a couple of weeks. So what should you focus on in 2019? Well, trend of corporate earnings. Third quarter earnings were great. We expect fourth quarter earnings when they start coming out in January to be fabulous. Tax cut helped. Guess what? We've had a new tax cut here in the last three months for the consumer. Crude oil making new lows, price of gas at the pump down. Tom talked about commodities going down. That's another reason why Jerome Powell can pull back on the rate hikes because his favorite inflation indicator, PCE, personal consumption expenditures, is going to dip below 2% because commodity prices, particularly gasoline at the pump, are dropping so sharply. So we could have a very, very good earnings environment in 2019, up maybe 8 to 9% year over year. Interest rates are obviously important, but I think the market has been fixating on that sector and group strength and weakness, really critical. Now, recently, the defensive sectors have been strong, consumer staples, utilities, healthcare, real estate. Um, that's unusual when interest rates are rising, but it is the reality. I think that uh, tech and finance are going to take over again along with consumer discretionary and stock selection. So the rest of this presentation is all about stock selection. What's our scenario? Higher rates and rising earnings. It's a very bullish scenario for 18 heading into 19. Now, just to put a point on it, Economic downturns precede recessions and bear markets. So I look at four indicators, including the yield curve and unemployment. I've highlighted two of them here, leading indicators versus coincident indicators from the conference board. They've always turned down before every recession since 1960. You can see that on the chart, making new highs as we speak. And even though housing numbers have been weak, the 12-month moving average of housing starts is still rising. There's a demand for housing under the surface, higher interest rates and higher prices and unavailability are diminishing, but housing starts are going up and they've turned down before every recession since 1960 as well. So hey Mark, the, yeah, sure, Tom. I, I got a question for you because this is kind of pretty timely. I mentioned earlier that uh, uh, housing starts uh, was our new home sales. I'm sorry, new home sales came in huge disappointment this morning. And I'm looking at the home construction index, which went down initially quite a bit, but has now rallied up probably about four or five percent off the low from earlier today. And it's now at about a, I don't know, seven week high. Um, do you think, you know, you were just talking about that area. Do you think that home uh, construction stocks, because they've been hit so hard in 2018, present a nice opportunity going forward if 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 we are truly strengthening? and we still have fairly low uh, interest rates, historically speaking, is that an area that you'd be interested in or do you need to see more 
technically out of that group first. I'm interested, but I need to see more technically. I'd like to see Chaik and Money Flow uh, turn very positive and stay there, indicating that there's accumulation going on. Also like to see this pattern that you define with Scooter, that we define with our uh, bullish personality changes, like to see the XHB start outperforming the market. Uh, so relative strength and money flow are the two things that I'm going to look at uh, to determine whether there's opportunity in home builders. Awesome. Thank you. So what's wrong here? If the economy is strong, earnings are strong, um, what's happened? Well, fear has gripped the market. This is the CNN fear and greed index. Hard to believe, but CNN has constructed one of the most useful sentiment indicators. Uh, it was 19 this morning extreme fear it's improving but you can see for the last month we've been in that extreme fear zone now why is that well people are afraid about interest rates they're afraid about uh tariff wars but the reality is for whatever reason fear has gripped the market and if you believe in warren buffett investors should be fearful when other people are greedy and greedy only when other people are fearful there have been buying opportunities out there. There will continue to be buying opportunities, and we're going to zero in on how you find them. So the problem is what to buy and when to sell, and our solution is Chaken Analytics. So the charts that we're going to show you are our way to combine fundamentals with technicals. As I said in the beginning, I've always believed that fundamentals drive the market, but emotions drive the market to extremes. And what better gauge of emotion than that fear and greed index? So for me, the path to profits has always been to combine fundamentals with technicals. And the way we do the fundamental analysis is the Chaikin power gauge rating. That's the culmination of my life's work. Very simple display, but a lot of number crunching going on under the surface. And now we have a rating for all equity ETFs that combines fundamentals the underlying stocks in those ETFs with technical analysis, a combination of relative strength and momentum. So you can see a lot of that on stock charts with the RR uh, charts, but we really believe in the power gauge and how it can help traders and investors who are technically oriented. So the Chaikin power gauge rating cuts through the clutter of all those economic numbers on the right and fundamental data and gives you the rating on the left, in this case, Starbucks, which has had a bearish rating in our model, turned bullish. And we'll show you a chart of that in stock charts to see how you could have identified that shift in relative strength. Uh, but four components, uh, earnings, technicals, and experts are bullish. The financials, not so. It's a melting pot, so they don't all have to be bullish. But the key is that we're looking at a variety of factors, value, growth, technicals, and sentiments. So this isn't a religious model. It doesn't say I only buy value stocks or dividend paying stocks or GARP stocks. It's eclectic. It finds a lot of ways to like or not like a stock. And these factors are what successful institutional investors look at every day, but they all have different styles and different time horizons. So value investors look at free cash flow and price to sales. Jim Cramer, a growth advocate, looks at earnings growth, earnings surprise, consistency, and so forth. We think sentiment indicators are really critical. There are secret sauce. Earnings estimate revisions, very important. Short interest insider activity, particularly in small caps. If insiders are buying, that's a big, big tell. And industry group relative strength. We love to stay with strong industry groups. That's why we're going to wait to see if the home building ETF starts to pick up relative to the market. <clears throat> now, a little bit of performance because I want you to come away believing that there is a way to know what the fundamental potential is without having to do two to four hours of work every day. Power gauge rating using the Russell 3000 average annual return since 1999 for very bullish stocks up 20% a year, average very bearish stocks up only 1%, and that's after a nine-year bull market. Part of the results through 2011 are simulated. Everything from 2011 is real time. So in 2015, we had a bear market in energy stocks. In the middle of this great bull market, energy stocks took it on the chin. And so the average very bearish stock in the power gauge rating, these were the Kinder Morgans and range resources and pioneer development of the world. 
we're down almost 18%. Small caps in general were in their own bear market. The Russell 2000 was down 28% at one point in 2015. So it was very important to know which stocks had bullish ratings and to avoid the stocks with very bearish ratings. Now, a little bit of a endorsement from my friend Jim Cramer. We just did a one hour one-on-one -on -one webinar. I want to explain why I love Mark Chaikin's stuff. It's simple, it's understandable, it's rational, it's not emotional. And you know I use it constantly, almost never want to go against it. High praise, um, take exception to Jim's bearishness on CNBC recently. Uh, don't know exactly why. We haven't talked about it. We texted after the Eagles game because that was his obsession and always is. And um, it's validation because Jim uses a lot of sources, uh, technical and fundamental. So if it's good for Jim, I think it's good for a lot of people as well. We're going to start with a generic classic pattern and then zero and on two very um, unique patterns using check and money flow and check and relative strength, which you can find on stock charts. So classic bull, these are the stocks that get you the big performance in your 401k plans. They're the stocks you want to trade from the long side. Power gauge is bullish, so the fundamental potential is strong, outperforming the market. And check and money flow is strong, telling you that the institutions are accumulating the stock, because that's what it's measured and has since 1982 when we introduced it. So we read the chart from the bottom up. And the reason is the power gauge rating is a ribbon at the bottom of that chart that goes from red to green to yellow. So power gauge rating for Cigna over the last year, two patches of green as the stock made two new highs up at the 220 level. Then we look at the relative strength. Now this is our way of looking at what Stock Charts does with Scooter. Uh, it looks back over 26 weeks. It's like a stochastic of relative strength. So it's a little more sensitive than Scooter, but it accomplishes the same thing. So uh, here we see that the, the relative strength went from red to green. We try and make it really simple, color code it. So you had a, what we call a bullish personality change and then shake and money flow all the way up for Signal when it broke out of this base at, at the 180 level on its way to 220 institutions accumulating and then buy and sell signals really important to have a disciplined approach to exits and entries we're going to show you a couple this is our oversold buy i owe this one to larry williams uh stock that you like and we define like as power gauge bullish makes a new eight day low as it gets oversold pattern works about two-thirds of the time it's a great entry for swing traders or options traders has a time duration of about five to 10 days. So it, it has a short duration, short shelf life. Now, the opposite classic shake and bear. So we're going to look at some examples of that uh, in the recent market activity. Power gauge is bearish, underperforming the market. Shake and money flow is red, not green, telling you that the institutions are selling. We're using Wynn Resorts as our poster child. Previously, we've had Chipotle, we've had Under Armour, we've had Kinder Morgan on the webinars that we do. These stocks tend to persist for six to 12 months, so we keep them in the deck. So looking at the chart from the bottom up, power gauge for Wynn has been bearish, underperforming the market beginning in June, institution selling, you're looking for sell signals, uh, to get out of a stale long position, or more importantly, to uh, put on a, a put position. We like vertical put spreads. You may want to buy the put outright. But if you get a signal, disciplined entry always works better than trading on your gut, even though our president tells us that he likes to make decisions on his gut. Uh, when you're trading, that's a bad idea. So put it all into a pyramid. Power gauge at the top along with industry group strength, just two technical indicators, check and money flow and relative strength. And in the middle, some form of discipline buy and sell signals can be candles, can be uh, the um, PPO, can be anything that works over time that's discipline and because successful trading demands discipline. So now one of the two patterns that we're going to focus on for the rest of the presentation. We call this the secret sell signal that 95% of traders don't see. It's a bearish check and money flow sell alert. Now there's a lot of documentation on check and money flow on stock charts and other places. Nobody's ever documented this because we only talk about it on these special webinars. So what is it? Well, 
it's a stock like Mohawk in the home furnishings industry, same as Whirlpool, downgraded today. They're a little late to the party, I think. And they're affected by home building trends. So check and money flow sell alert happens when a stock gets overbought and check and money flow, which normally fluctuates around the zero line, stays red or negative. So we see one there. We see another one here. And they were accompanied by what we call our relative strength sell signals. But the big one came up there when the stock was making a new all-time high at 280. Money flow stayed negative. That tells you that smart money is getting out of that stock. Could be insiders, could be institutions. Somebody felt they knew something. They didn't participate in the rally. They sold into it. So this signal, I think, is the most powerful signal I know for traders. So I'm going to just spend a minute on it. Relative strength sell signal. Stock is underperforming the market. So in the case of stock charts, scooter would be below 10. Rallies up and gets overbought on a short-term basis. Might go above its 21-day average. When it drops below the 21-day average, that triggers a relative strength sell signal. Now, those signals are really powerful. They last four to eight weeks. So you can establish a position and not worry that the option is going to expire worthless in 10 days. Uh, and they're 70% accurate based on our back testing. Really powerful signal. You can find that signal on stock charts by looking for stocks with their scooters under 10 that get overbought, let's say, on a 13-day commodity channel index or stochastic or RSI, whatever you like. Now, this is what it looks like on stock charts. Here's a one-year chart of Mohawk. And we've got those two bearish money flow sell alerts. And I use the 13-day CCI, which I've used for, I don't know, 30 years to measure overbought. We do it a little differently in our product. But you can see that Scooter was down around 10. Stock gets overbought and institutions are selling. So checking money flow stays red, doesn't go green. And then we had another one right here and then that big one back there. Now, let's look at a more recent example after we sort of take another quote from Warren Buffett which is they don't call balls and strikes on Wall Street, so you don't have to swing at every pitch. He says you can wait for your pitch. He calls it the fat pitch. We call it the ideal setup, and the ideal setup requires a disciplined set of entry and exit signals. Now, what we learn in working with subscribers is that a lot of people don't want to go to a website. They want to be told when stocks trigger a signal. So we put an alerts capability into Chaik. It's very important if you have a discipline to know how to find those stocks that meet your criteria. So we had a sell signal on HFC, Holly Frontier, a relative strength sell on November 9th at 65.74. Now, I did a webinar and I was thinking about Thanksgiving and I called it Holly Farms. I was corrected on it. This is Holly Frontier. It's an integrate, It's a oil refining stock. And here's what it looked like. It had had a bearish personality change, so it went from outperforming to underperforming. So think scooter under 10 or around 10. Rallies up, and by the way, bearish money flow sell alert, overbought 65, 75, all the way down to 56. And even with this rally early this morning, still trading 59.25. If you can establish a bearish position or get out of a stale position on patterns like that, you're going to be ahead of the game. So what is a personality change? Just to reiterate, it's a stock that has been outperforming the market that starts to underperform the market. And too often we're stubborn. We don't recognize that. That's why Tom's question about home builders is a good one, because they've been dogs. And if they start to outperform and you're short, you're going to be on the wrong side of that trade. So here's an example of a stock where the power gauge had been very bullish, applied materials along with LAM research. Everybody made a lot of money in 17 on these semiconductor equipment stocks. But something happened in April. You had a bearish personality change, went from outperforming to underperforming with institution selling. And what we like to do is when you've had a bearish personality change, we don't want to short it or put a put position on right there. We look for the first sell signal. Again, discipline, entries, and exits. So that first sell signal was the relative strength sell. 
It came in May at a price of 50 and the ultimate low on the stock was 30. These are powerful patterns and you need to spot them. You can do it with Scooter. That's the beauty of stockcharts.com. Now we also screen for bearish personality changes. So I screen for recent large cap bearish personality changes and I see that Apple and Amazon and Adobe are on that list. So let's take a look at Apple. First, we'll look at it in stock charts. Stock looked great at 230, but guess what? Bearish money flow sell alert. Why didn't money flow go positive when the stock made a new all-time high 1.2 trillion valuation? Smart money was selling, scooter was above 90. There was no indication except from this pattern that's worked for 30 years. We've taught this to institutions, now we're sharing it with individual traders. So bearish money flow sell alert, and the stock goes into a downtrend, breaks support. Without knowing the fundamentals, you really don't have the complete picture. So here's the complete picture. Again, look at the bottom of the chart. Taken power gauge turns bullish at 213 after we had had a bearish money flow sell alert, and it has a bearish personality change. Now, Apple is obviously gonna rally with the market, but they really got the analyst community upset in their earnings report back in October when they said, we're not gonna give any hardware numbers anymore. Well, you do not wanna get on the wrong side of Wall Street analysts. And believe it or not, after 50 years on Wall Street, they still have an impact. So that's the reason we like combining fundamentals with technical. So you can see the technical breakdown, but when you know that an objective multi-factor model has turned bearish as Apple did at 213 on the way to 170, and you see the technicals break down, then you know what to do. You're gonna sell rallies, you're not gonna hang on unless you're just a diehard who doesn't like to pay taxes and you bought the stock at 30, but the bottom line is you need to know the complete picture to make the right decision. As you would have in Netflix, here's another one of those FANG stocks where you had a bearish personality change much earlier along with Facebook, which uh, Tom referred to early on. Netflix had a bearish personality change in July. The power gauge had already turned bearish and look at the institutional selling. So everything's lined up against it. You get that overbought sell signal, act on it. You get a rally on earnings, doesn't penetrate resistance, act on it. But the bottom line is these patterns repeat over and over and over again. They're reliable in that webinar I did with Jim Cramer. I was very bearish on Netflix, so I'm, I'm there for posterity saying shorted above 320, which is what happened in early November. Now, NVIDIA is a real case in point. This is a stock that captured everybody's imagination, chips for gaming, chips for Bitcoin, uh, chips for AI, chips for the cloud. Fabulous company, but look what happened. Power gauge turned bearish on October 5th. The stock was 270 down from a high of about 285. So pretty close to the high, that doesn't always happen. Institutions are selling, bearish personality change. So that's where the power gauge turned bearish. Then look what happened. One of the most esteemed research firms on Wall Street, Goldman Sachs, upgraded Nvidia to a conviction buy at 240 on October 18th. 13 days after the power gauge turned bearish. So are you gonna to listen to Goldman Sachs or are you gonna follow an objective model? Don't know what the analyst biases are at Goldman Sachs, but what I can tell you is when a stock goes from 240 to 138 and you have a conviction buy on it, something's wrong. They actually reverse that conviction buy uh, down here around 180. But that's pretty painful for people who are following Goldman Sachs research and the major institutions do that. So, yeah. Tom talked about Tiffany. I know on Monday he was bearish on the stock, uh, but let's look at it through the lens of the power gauge rating. Power gauge rating has been bearish since August. Bearish personality change. So now the market agrees with the model. Institution selling. We got our money flow sell signal here at about 110. And then you get a bearish earnings surprise and the stock's down 11 or 12%. Gap down on the opening, no chance to get out if you hadn't sold previously. Hey, Martin. And, uh, sure. Uh, I got a question. So on this particular stock, I'm looking at the rally that it had maybe back in September. Is the reason why at that overbought 
area that you would not have been bearish the stock? Is it because it's still hanging on to some relative strength? No, actually, uh, you look at the bearish money flow sell alert. So it got overbought. Uh, clearly, people were liking the specialty retailers and the luxury goods. Uh, but I'd be bearish on this stock. I don't like to buck a trend. We've got a long-term trend line there. It's a double smooth 200-day exponential average, and it does a really good job of defining long-term trends. So, you know, it's a mixed bag, but the power gauge at the bottom is telling you, except when people get excited about earnings, emotional, this stock has basically been underperforming. And I was bearish on this stock and the bearish money flow seller crops up over, over and over again. Here's another example of it. Institution selling, you can't withstand that tsunami. It's just overpowering. So we also screen for bullish personality changes. And recently, Starbucks uh, and CBOE and uh, a couple of the food stocks had bullish personality changes. So let's take a look at Starbucks. Here's Starbucks in stockcharts.com without the fundamental potential of the power gauge rating. Uh, but you see Scooter had a big move from under 10 to above 70. Uh, the stock actually broke out based on a positive earnings surprise. And what we've seen recently is you've pulled back from uh, about 69.50 all the way to 65. And look at shaken money flow. It stayed green on the pullback. That's the opposite of the money flow sell alert. This is stealth buying by uh, institutions. You want to Use the oversold as an opportunity to get into Starbucks. Obviously, you're going to use stops, but these are your entry points, and especially in bull markets with stocks like Nvidia and Micron and uh, you know the healthcare stocks. By the way, United Health had a great earnings call with analysts last night. That's part of the reason healthcare is doing so well today, Tom. Very powerful. So there's your bullish personality change. You had one in Verizon, which actually was one of those defensive stocks that attracted so much money uh, as people were fearful over the last two months. And Tom nailed it. Uh, you had uh, a market that should have been doing one thing in October and November because fear had taken over. You had gold going the opposite way. That's probably going to change now that the market feels a little more confident. But there's Verizon, bullish personality change. So we look for that first buy signal as our entry point that came at about 51, high dividend paying stock, rallied above 60, pulled back to the 21 day average here recently with good money flow. These are the stocks that you can find over and over and over again. When the market's defensive, you'll be buying Verizon. When it's on the offense, you're gonna be buying United Health and Nvidia and Micron or Salesforce. So personality changes are really critical to understanding the ebb and flow of money in and out of the market. And there's your first buy signal. So I'd like to end the webinar with something completely different. I'm a big Monty Python fan. Uh, we have our high-end workstation, but we really, I started taking analytics to level the playing field for individual investors. So we've introduced something called Power Pulse. I know a lot of stock charts uh, members have subscribed to Power Pulse based on our previous presentations. It's a way to position your portfolio for success using the power gauge rating. So here's an example of a six month chart of Tiffany's through the lens of the chart in Power Pulse. So you see the power gauge and the uh, four primary factors. Three of them are bearish. You see going below the long term trend where you see that red arrow, we actually put out a sell signal on Tiffany's. Um, I know a lot of you listen to Dan Russo when he does. Uh, stocks today at 9.15 every day on Stock Charts TV between 9.15 and 9.30. Dan has been bearish on Tiffany's, and obviously you had the big down move today. Um, I'll end the webinar with an example of a stock that both Dan Russo and I have been bearish on, Wynn Resorts. You've already seen it as our classic bear. On August 29th, in my weekly market insights, I made Wynn my bearish stock of the week. And here's what it looked like back then. The stock was trading at about 148 uh, on its way to 100. And you can see at the bottom, relative strength is bearish, money flow is bearish, below the long-term trend, but more importantly, the power gauge rating was bearish and remains bearish even with this 12% rally. So that's the way we combine the Chaikin uh, tools into, a, we think, an affordable product that we're gonna make more affordable here right at the end. Three powerful investment tools, Personalized portfolio monitoring, 
our done for you research, which includes the power gauge rating and then my weekly market commentary. So you can sh see the vision that I've shared on this webinar and it, not right all the time, but right over time and pretty proud of the track record. So power pulse is normally uh, $49.95 a month as a special for stock charts uh, users. We're reducing the price to $24.95 a month. This offer expires on Saturday, December 1st. And I'd like to give you a special bonus. If you've followed Dan Russo, you know how sharp he is. He is also the editor of our Mastering the Bear weekly newsletter with a bearish recommendation every week. If you subscribe to this special offer, we'll give you a one-month complimentary subscription to Dan's weekly Mastering the Bear newsletter. It comes out on Wednesday morning. Very valuable. Even before the market dropped, he really nailed it. And so that's a special bonus. If you subscribe to Check and Power Pulse, you'll get one month of Mastering the Bear a complimentary from us. So with that, I'd like to really thank uh, Tom and Aaron. It's always a joy to be on. I, when I listen to you guys in the beginning, I think, why aren't I that smart? Because you covered all the bases. A lot of the things that I was going to talk about, you nailed in terms of interest rates, the dollar we didn't go uh, into. But clearly, you guys have breadth and depth. And I'm just proud to be part of the uh, Stock Charts community. Well, it is a pleasure to have you on here. That was fascinating, uh, your presentation. And I... I, I use a lot of fundamentals along with technicals, and I, I use the fundamentals to find stocks that I want to trade, and then I use the technicals to find my entry points and my exit points. Um, and so I would clearly endorse what you do with your power gauge. I think it's fascinating that you're able to put into to that gauge so many different indicators that are very important in the overall market. And I think you're, I don't know, is this like a post cyber Monday special that you've got going through Saturday? Yeah, now it's cyber week now. Cyber Monday is is <laughs> old hat. Now it's cyber week and you know, who knows, it'll be cyber month in another couple of years. But yes, this is uh, definitely a cyber Monday special. All right, yeah, that that is uh, kind of funny though, because it did start out that it was just Black Friday and now all of a sudden it was Cyber Monday. And now I still keep getting all these emails from everyone saying, you know, we're gonna extend this this deal. I think we're gonna go right up to Christmas on some of these emails I'm getting. But uh, anyway, it's always a pleasure having you on here, Mark. That was some great information. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Eric. I yes. look forward to the next time. All right, I think before you go though, um, if we can, our uh, producer, I'm sure, will put up- Ah, a the poll. Yeah, let's take a look at the poll, see what everybody thinks. I think people filled that out before I went through my market uh, vision, so hopefully I, I didn't influence people. So this is why we're so uh, into education, because people are cautious. They're really fearful uh, if you look at the market action based on that CNN index. And caution is always good, but there's also opportunity in corrections and pullbacks. And we like to focus on the opportunities unless we're really convinced that it's a bear market and they don't come along, but once every four or five years. Yeah. I know one thing that we like to go over a lot on the show, we look at the VIX, the volatility index and the VXN for the NASDAQ 100. And, you know, I've pointed out on here many times that when you get those panicked readings, those high uh, levels of the VIX and the VXN, if you go back in history and history is a great educator, you go back and you look at the major bottoms in the market, they always coincide with these huge spikes in volatility. And we saw that. I mean, we saw it recently. You were talking about it a lot during your presentation, the fear that's out there in the market and everybody being so bearish. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's one way of, for everybody easily to follow it on start, stock charts is just simply watch the VIX and the VXN. When you get those big spikes, many right. times you're at or near a very significant bottom. Well, and of course, I'm oh, sorry, Aaron, go ahead. I was going to say, you know, we do, I, I do cover the sentiment, you know, every week. And I think it was last week or the week before, NAME, uh, the National Association of Active Investment <laughs> Managers, reported their lowest exposure. 35% down, down from 100% four months earlier. Yeah. So there's some. Yeah, I think that's a really good sentiment indicator. I just wanted to point out that there's something called contango in the futures market. It's when the near term VIX contract or any futures contract is actually trading higher than the uh, further out contract. At the same time you were spiking, you had contango, meaning there was real fear again in the market. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting perspectives. I like it.
All right. Well, always a great uh, time when you come on the show, Mark, and we look forward to having you back again. And I agree with you on your assessment of Dan. You're working with a very sharp uh, individual. He comes on the show quite often as well. We always enjoy having our visits with Dan as well. But really want to thank you for uh, taking your time out to to help uh, show everyone what you're thinking about when you look at the market. My pleasure. And I look forward to the next time.